Welcome to our soil testing video series jointly presented by the Geotechnical Division of the HKIE and the Geotechnical Engineering Office of the CEDD. The production of this series is made possible by the generous support of our sponsors. This video will cover the Proctor Compaction Test, Sand Replacement Test SRT, and the Nuclear Densometer Test NDT, which are commonly used in soil compaction. Soil compaction is a process of increasing a soil's density by packing the soil particles closer with the reduction of the volume of air in the soil. Mechanical means such as rolling and or vibration is used to provide the compactive effort in the field. With the increase in density, the soil can achieve an increase in soil shear strength and reduction in compressibility and permeability. A minimum relative compaction level, for example 95%, is commonly stated in the specifications as a compliance requirement for compacted fill material. Relative compaction is defined as the ratio of in-situ dry density to maximum dry density of the fill material. In Hong Kong, the in-situ fill density is determined from either the sand replacement test or the nuclear densometer test. The maximum dry density is determined using the laboratory Proctor compaction test. The Proctor compaction test determines the dry density and moisture content relationship of a soil under a specific amount of compactive effort. The maximum dry density MDT, and optimum moisture content OMC, of the soil are then obtained from this relationship. A designer may choose to carry out a suitable Proctor compaction test from the eight different tests given in Geospec 3. A key consideration in the choice of test is rammer weight. Either a 2.5 kg or a 4.5 kg rammer can be used. The 2.5 kg rammer method is known as the standard Proctor test, while the 4.5 kg rammer method is the heavy Proctor test, which has a compactive energy input 4.5 times larger than the standard Proctor test. Another consideration is the capacity of the compaction mold. Either a 1 liter mold or a CBR mold with a capacity of 2.3 liters can be used. The CBR mold is suitable for coarse grain soils. The last consideration is whether the soil particles are susceptible to crushing or not under compaction. A larger soil sample will be required if the soil is susceptible to crushing. The designer is reminded to provide an adequate mass of soil for the Proctor test, making reference to Table 2.1 of Geospec 3. Previous studies have shown that most local fill materials are susceptible to crushing under compaction, as shown in this graph. We are now going to show you the key procedures in the Proctor compaction test. We first prepare a sufficient soil sample through sieving and subdividing. For a soil susceptible to crushing, we would then prepare at least 5 soil specimens by mixing the soil with water to different moisture contents, instead of using the same soil specimen throughout the test. The soil specimen is then put into the compaction mold and compacted by the rammer following the procedures as stipulated in Geospec 3. For example, if a 2.5 kg rammer is used, the soil specimen will be compacted in 3 layers in the mold and 27 blows will be applied to each layer. Upon completion of compaction, weigh the compacted soil mass and collect a specimen from the soil mass for determination of moisture content. We can thus obtain the bulk density, moisture content and dry density of the soil specimen. We then repeat the compaction test at least four more times with the soil specimen prepared at different moisture contents. Now, the dry density of each soil specimen will be plotted against the respective moisture content. A compaction curve can then be drawn. The maximum dry density and optimum moisture content of the soil can be identified from the compaction curve as shown here. Air void lines are drawn in the same plot by either measuring or assuming the particle density GS of the soil. These lines show the percentage of air voids in the soils at different dry density and moisture content combinations. Based on a review of over 16,000 compaction test results, an empirical correlation has been established between the MDD and OMC under the standard Proctor test for film materials used in Hong Kong. 
We will now cover the Sand Replacement Test, SRT. There are two options under Geospec 3. The small pouring cylinder is suitable for fine to medium grain soils, while the large pouring cylinder is suitable for fine, medium and coarse grain soils. The option to be used also depends on the thickness of the compacted soil layers on site as shown here. The purpose of the SRT is to determine the in-situ dry density of the soil. The apparatus for the SRT includes a pouring cylinder, either a small or a large size, a metal tray with a hole, replacement sand, and suitable tools for excavating holes in the soil. Before carrying out the test on site, the density of the replacement sand should be determined in the laboratory using a calibrating container. By measuring the volume of the calibrating container and the weight of the replacement sand in the container, the density of the sand can be accurately determined. To carry out the sand replacement test, we first have to level the ground surface by a scraper tool. Then, lay and fix the metal tray on the prepared surface with its hole centering over the portion of the ground to be tested. Use the hole as a guide. Excavate a circular hole in the ground to the required depth. The excavated soil is carefully collected from the hole and placed in an airtight bag for determination of its mass and moisture content in the laboratory. The next step is to measure the volume of the excavated hole. First, place the pouring cylinder over the hole concentrically and fill the cylinder with replacement sand with a known initial mass. We then open the shutter at the bottom of the cylinder and allow the replacement sand to run out until there is no further flow of sand indicating that the excavated hole is completely filled. After that, we can close the shutter. Then we would remove the cylinder and determine the mass of sand remaining in the cylinder after pouring. The mass of sand inside the hole can then be calculated by subtracting the remaining mass from its initial mass. The SRT is based on the assumption that the volume of the test hole remains constant during the test. Since the mass of the excavated soil and the mass of sand filling the hole are known and the density of sand has been determined from laboratory calibration, the in-situ bulk density of the soil in the ground can be calculated. Finally, the in-situ dry density of the soil is calculated from the soil's in-situ bulk density and moisture content. We're now going to introduce the Nuclear Densometer Test NDT. The nuclear densometer test is applicable for determining the in-situ bulk densities of fine to medium grain soils. It measures the average bulk density using a radioactive source cesium-137 which emits gamma rays. First, on a flat ground free from disturbed or loose materials, a hole in the soil is prepared for the positioning and insertion of the densometer probe. Next, we would carefully place the densometer gauge over the soil. Push the probe into the hole in the soil. Three density readings are then recorded. The average of these readings is taken as the in-situ bulk density at the test location. After the gauge measurement, take a soil sample near the test location for determination of the in-situ moisture content. According to previous studies, the in-situ bulk densities determined by the sand replacement test and the nuclear densometer test are comparable to within about 5%. However, the use of a nuclear densometer for measurement of moisture content may not be reliable. In summary, the NTT is a quicker alternative to the SRT for in-situ bulk density determination as it only requires a few minutes to carry out, compared to 20 minutes for the SRT. It is therefore more efficient to use for a large-scale earth filling project such as land reclamation, where a significant amount of testing is required. Before using the densometer for a soil for which it has not previously been used, at least 10 pairs of test results from both the NDT and SRT shall be compared. The NDT should be used only if the results from the NDT and SRT do not differ by more than 80 kg per cubic meter, and the densometer produces results which are both higher and lower than that from the SRT. Lastly, NDT tends to overestimate the moisture content thus resulting in an underestimation of the dry density. One must be careful in using this method in the determination of moisture content. This wraps up our video on the Proctor Compaction Test, Sand Replacement Test and the Nuclear Densometer Test. 
We hope you have gained valuable insights on the theories, procedures, and the applications of these tests. Join us in the next video as we explore another exciting topic in soil testing. Thank you for watching.